Good morning, afternoon, or evening. How y'all doing today? Welcome back to Mr. Morrill's Honors Algebra 1 and 2 class. Today we're going to do the 10-4 quiz together. Uh, there was some confusion, and I want to make sure that everyone understands what they're doing before their test. So let's go ahead and just take one at a time, but always remember to read the directions. Write each function in vertex form. Remember that vertex form is f of x equals a times x minus h plus your k value. Then graph each quadratic function using transformations. Then determine the vertex and axis of symmetry. Based on the graph, determine the domain and range. OK, so let's take this guy. Number one, in order for us to complete the square here, remember that you want to isolate the x squared and the x. You're separating this plus 5. You're just separating it from there. So it makes it easier for you. Go ahead and go x squared plus 4x. Give a good space. Close the parentheses. And then you have plus 5. Okay? Now, we have to complete the square within this parentheses. So when we complete the square, remember that we're going to use b over 2 squared. So the b here is 4. So b over 2 is 2. So we're going to add inside the parentheses plus 2 squared. And when we originally we're completing the square, we would add this b over 2 to both sides. But we're not technically completing the square. We are, but we're creating a, a, a vertex form. So what we have to do is, instead of adding it to one side and then subtracting it to the other, we're just right off the bat subtracting the b over 2 squared to that 5, to that constant that we pulled aside. So I added the b over 2 squared inside the parentheses, and I subtract it from the constant. Now is the easy part. f of x equals, I have created a perfect square trinomial here. So it's the square root of x squared, which is x, and the inside of the b over 2 squared. So that's plus 2 squared, and then 5 minus 4 is 1. We are done. We have now completed the square. Okay, so what's the, ver what's the axis of symmetry? Well, let's look at the vertex. The vertex, remember it's opposite of what's inside of here, the plus 2. It's opposite. The h is opposite. So negative 2, comma 1. My axis of symmetry is x equals the x value of the vertex. In order to graph, we have to find a y-intercept as well. So the y-intercept is the y value when x is 0. When x is 0, okay, when this guy is 0 here, I've got 2 squared, which is 4, plus 1 is 5, so 0, comma, 5. And guys, that's all you need. Yes, sir. This plus 5, you added it here, my man. I'm sorry? Yes, if you wanted to look at the y-intercept as being the constant here, you could do that as well. But I want to make sure that you understand where it's coming from. Thank you, sir. Okay, so now let's graph this bad boy. All right, let's graph it. Okay, so we have our axis of symmetry, which is negative 2. So let's go ahead and draw our x equals negative 2. It's an invisible line, so it's dashed. Let's graph our vertex, negative 2, 1. Let's graph our y-intercept, which is 0, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And now the mirror image. That y-intercept is 2 to the right from the axis of symmetry, so now you go 2 to the left. And bingo, you have the graph of this quadratic function. My domain, the domain of all 
quadratic functions is all real numbers. So negative infinity to positive infinity. The range, the range of the possible y values. My lowest y value here is negative 1. This is my lowest y value. So I'm going from negative 1 to positive infinity. Okay, I'm going to pause and make sure you got this down, and I'll answer any questions you have. All right, boys. Let us continue now. I'm going to go ahead and erase this. We'll keep this graph. And let's do number two. All right, so we'll put this back here. Now let's do number two. Okay, same exact concept. We're going to do this over and over and over. It's the same thing. We're going to separate the x squared and the x. So we have x squared minus 7x plus b over 2 squared. So that's negative 7 halves squared. This plus 10, I separated it out, and I'm going to subtract the value of b over 2 squared. I'm subtracting that parentheses, basically. Okay? Please remember, do not multiply this negative and this negative. That's not the order of operations. So now, we've created the vertex form pretty much, because now I have a perfect square trinomial. So f of x equals x minus 7 halves squared. Now over here, we have to do some math. This is 10 minus 49 fourths. Common denominator is 4. This goes to 40. So that's going to equal negative 9 fourths. So I have x minus 7 halves squared minus 9 fourths. You're done. You're done. What is my vertex? My vertex is, remember, the opposite of this negative 7 halves. So it's 7 halves, comma, negative 9 fourths. If you don't like fractions, you could write that as 3.5, comma, negative 2.25. It's my vertex. Okay. And then, what is my axis? Well, my axis is x equals the x value of the vertex, which is 7 halves, or x equals 3.5. My y-intercept. You can plug in 0 and solve, or you can, like you astutely said, just use the constant, which is 10. So, 0, comma, 10. And that's it. Okay, so, graphing. My axis of symmetry is 7 halves or 3.5. So, 1, 2, 3, in between the 3 and the 4. That is an estimate, but it's pretty accurate. My um, vertex is 3.5, negative 2.5. So, down 1, 2, and a little bit. Let's call that right there. My y-intercept is 10. I'm going to elect to go by 2s. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. That's my y-intercept. That is a half and 1, 2, 3 to the left. So go a half and 1, 2, 3 to the right. And bingo, you have the graph of this quadratic function. What is my domain? The domain of all quadratic functions is negative infinity to positive infinity. What is my range? My range is the lowest value of this bad boy is right here at 9 fourths, a negative 9 fourths or negative 2.5. So it's negative 9 fourths comma to positive infinity. Does that make sense, my brother? May we continue? Yeah. You sure? Thank you, sir. All right. Let's do number three. 
Let's do number three. Okay, for number three, this one really uh, confused a lot of people. I, I don't know why, but that's the whole point of doing this, to figure out why. Remember that, as always, you want to isolate the x squared and the x. Okay? So you're isolating this 2x squared plus 4x. Leave yourself a space and pull out that negative 3. However, when you have a coefficient in front of the x squared, I must factor that out first. So I'm going to factor out a 2 here. So this becomes 2 times x squared plus 2x. Now, plus b over 2 squared. This is your b. So plus b over 2 squared, that would be 2 divided by 2 is 1 squared. Now, pay attention to this. You have the negative 3. When you factor out an a from the x squared, you're going to subtract the product of the factored out a times the b over 2 squared. Again, you're going to subtract the factored out a times the b over 2 squared. You're going to subtract the factored out a times the b over 2 squared. Okay? Make sure you understand that. Now, my function f of x equals 2 times x plus 1 squared. Negative 3, 1 squared is 1 times 2 is negative 2, so 3 minus 2 is negative 5. Okay, and that's it. We're done. That's it. It's over. The torture is over. Now, my vertex is negative 1, comma, negative 5, always opposite of the h. My axis, my axis of symmetry is x equals the x value of the vertex, which is negative 1. My y-intercept, I can plug in 0 and solve for it, or I can simply look, just like you had said before, at the constant of the original function, so that's 0, negative 3. And that's it. Now we're ready to rock and roll. My axis of symmetry is negative 1. My vertex is negative 1, negative 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. My y-intercept is 0, negative 3. 1, 2, 3. That's 1 to the right, so go 1 to the left. And I have graphed my function. The domain is negative infinity to positive infinity, as it will always be. My range, the lowest value here of the quadratic function is negative 5. So I'm going from negative 5 to positive infinity. Does that make sense, my brother? Promise? Okay. I'm going to pause, give you a second to write it down. All right, boys. Now let's do the last one. Go ahead and do this last one here. Okay, so now we have this guy right here. Okay, same technique. I want to create vertex form. I want to complete the square. Isolate the x squared and the x. So I have negative x squared minus 8x. Space, pull out the negative 14. I have a negative 1 in front of that x squared, so I must factor that out. So I'm going to factor out a negative 1, leaving me with x squared plus 8x plus b over 2 squared. This is your new b that you're working with. So plus 4 squared. The negative 14 you pulled out. Minus the factored out value, so the factored out a, times your b over 2 squared. Now it's easy. G of x equals negative 1 times x plus 4 
squared. Now, pay attention to this. This is negative 14, okay? Negative times a negative is a positive 16, because 4 squared is 16. 16 times negative 1 is negative 16, times a negative is 16, so that is plus 2. My vertex is negative 4, comma, 2. My axis is the x value of the vertex, which is x equals negative 4. My y-intercept is the constant of the original function, which is 0, negative 14. Literally. Does that make sense? Okay. Now, let's graph this bad boy. My axis symmetry is negative 4. So 1, 2, 3, 4. Please remember you have a negative here, so this must be pointing downwards. My vertex is negative 4, 2. My y-intercept is negative 14. Um, I'm gonna, you can go by 2's if you want. So negative 2, negative 4, negative 6, negative 8, negative 10, negative 12, negative 14. You could have gone by 7's. Whatever you want as long as you show me. That's my y-intercept. That is 1, 2, 3, 4 to the right. So go 1, 2, 3, 4 to the left for the mirror image. And that is the graph of this function. The domain. The domain is always all real numbers. Now in this case, the range. The highest value of the range here is at positive 2. So I'm going from all the way from negative infinity up to 2, my maximum. Remember that in interval notation, I go from smallest to largest. And you're done. Does that make sense, my brother? Okay. I'm going to pause this, set up the next quiz, give you some time to write it down. Thank you. Hope you learned a lot. Okay, guys. Hold on. Okay, guys. Now let's do the 10-5 quiz. Okay. Some of you guys, I'm not trying to be mean or rude, but you need to learn how to read directions without graphing. No wonder some of you took so long yesterday. Read, my brothers, without graphing. Determine whether the quadratic function has a maximum or a minimum. Please remember, guys, if your a is greater than 0, your function goes upwards, so you have a minimum. If your a is less than 0, if it's a negative, your graph points downwards, so there is a maximum. Come on, y'all. So right off the bat, the A here is positive. So you know there's going to be a minimum. Now, what is the minimum? The minimum, in order to find it, you must find the vertex. And the minimum value is the Y value of the vertex. So in order to find the vertex, you must find the axis of symmetry first. So negative B over 2A is going to be the X value of your vertex, which is negative times negative 6 over 2 times a, so that's 3. So my x value of the vertex is 3. Now plug it in, my brothers. 3 squared is 9. Minus 6 times 3 is 18, plus 3. That is negative 9 plus 3, which is negative 6. So I have a minimum, and that minimum value is negative 6. Done. You guys were spending five, seven minutes on these problems because you were trying to graph. You were not following directions with all due respect. For number two, it's a negative, my brothers. So it's going to go downward. You're going to have a max. You're going to have a maximum here. In order to find the maximum value, you must find the y value of the vertex. So I must first find the axis of symmetry. Negative b over 2a equals negative 4 over 2 times negative 1. Negative 4 over negative 2 is positive 2. That is the x value of my vertex. Now plug that sucker in. Don't 
do the common mistake that most people did. This is not negative 2 squared. This is negative times 2 squared. So that's negative 4 plus 8 plus 12. Negative 4 plus 8 is 4. 4 plus 12 is 16. My vertex is 216. The maximum occurs at 2 with a value of 16. It's that simple. Okay? Does that make sense, my brother? Okay. Now, solve each quadratic function by graphing. Okay. I want you to solve it by graphing. Determine the axis of symmetry, the vertex, the y-intercept, and the x-intercepts. I gave you a hint. Guys, don't you remember when we talked about this before we even started learning um, how to graph quadratics? When we were factoring and we learned the zero product property, didn't I say that the solution of a quadratic function are the x-intercepts? Those are the solutions. And they're called solutions, intercepts, zeros, or roots. Okay. So the first thing you always have to do here, find the x-intercepts if possible. So I'm always going to try to factor, okay? You have several pools at your disposal. You can use a square root method if there's no uh, bx value. You can factor. You can complete the square. Or you can use your quadratic formula. I'm going to try to factor this bad boy. So, what times what is 5, but when I add it together is negative 6, that's negative 1 and negative 5. I'm solving for x here, so I set it equal to 0. Zero product property, my x will equal 1 and 5. That means, okay, we'll, we'll piece this together one by one. That means the following, that this particular x, uh, uh, I'm sorry, this particular quadratic function goes through 1, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Those are the solutions of this graph. And those are my x-intercepts, by the way. So my x-intercepts are done. 1, 0, and 5, 0. OK? What's my axis of symmetry? My axis of symmetry is x equals negative b over 2a. So x equals negative times negative 6 is positive 6 over 2 times 1, so that's 3. So my axis of symmetry is x equals 3. So at 1, 2, 3, draw your invisible vertical line. That's the one that splits the graph into two equal halves. What is my vertex? My vertex is the xy when you plug in the axis of symmetry x. So this is 3, comma, 3 squared is 9, minus 18, plus 5. 9 minus 18 is negative 5, uh, negative 9, plus 5 is negative 4. So my vertex is negative 3, 1, 2, 3, 4. Y-intercept. My y-intercept is straight up 0, 5. It's the constant of the function written in standard form. Or if it's in vertex form, you plug in 0 for x and solve for y. So, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, that is 1, 2, 3 to the left, and 1, 2, 3 to the right for your mirror image. And guess what, gentlemen? Not only have you graphed, but you have solved this quadratic function. Done. Questions on this, my brother? Take your time. Ask away. I'm very proud of you for coming in for extra help. You got it, my man? All right. Last but not least, brother, we've got f of x equals 3x squared plus 6x plus 7. I'm going to first try to find my x-intercepts. I very well cannot factor that, even if I use the Cuban method. 3 times 7 is 21. What times what is 21? But when I add it together, is 6. Nothing. So I'm going to make my life easy. I'm going to go ahead and use a quadratic formula. Negative b which is negative 6, plus or minus square root of b squared. So that's 36 minus 4 times a times c over 2a, which is 6. This is negative 6 plus or minus 
This is 36 minus 84. That's going to give you a negative 48. Okay. Negative 48, when it's negative inside of that square root, how many solutions do I have? No solution. So the x-intercept is none. That does not mean... That does not mean that there is no graph. That just means it never crosses the x-axis. These are imaginary solutions. But we don't need imaginary solutions. I'm asking for the x-intercepts. There are none here. So now, axis of symmetry. Axis of symmetry is x equals negative b over 2a, which equals negative times negative, I'm sorry, negative 6 divided by 2a, which is 3. So negative 6 over 6 is negative 1. So x equals negative 1 is my axis of symmetry. My vertex, plug in the x value of the axis of symmetry into the function. So I've got 3 times negative 1 squared plus 6 times negative 1 plus 7. Negative 1 squared is 1 times 3 is 3. Minus 6 is negative 3. Negative 3 plus 7 is 4. Okay? So my axis of symmetry is negative 1. My vertex is negative 1, 1, 2, 3, 4. I have no x-intercepts, but I have a y-intercept. And my y-intercept is 0, comma, 7. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 1 to the right of the axis of symmetry. 1 to the left of the axis of symmetry. And I am done. Does that make sense, my brother? Thank you so very much for taking the time to come in. I hope you learned a lot and have a wonderful day.